Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze Havana syndrome? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing you in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background of Havana syndrome, then I'll move to my analysis. Havana syndrome is a collection of unexplained symptoms, first reported by several individuals in 2017. The people affected by the symptoms were employees of the U.S. State Department who were stationed in Cuba. Even though the symptoms were first reported in 2017, they were initially experienced in late 2016. The employees were in Cuba as a prelude to establishing diplomatic relations. It was a tense time, and the symptoms didn't help ease that tension. They ended up causing a variety of problems as far as diplomatic relations. There were many different symptoms reported, including headache, nausea, anxiety, fatigue, insomnia, ear pain, ringing in the ears, cognitive difficulties, confusion, memory loss, and dizziness. In addition to the symptoms, there were other characteristics that some of the workers observed. They would feel vibrations and a change in air pressure. Some described it like driving a car with one window down. There's also this phenomenon where they heard a grating noise that was coming from one specific direction. The noise would last from 20 seconds to 30 minutes. After these initial cases in Cuba, intelligence officers and diplomats who were stationed in various places around the world started reporting similar symptoms. They were stationed in places like China, Poland, Georgia, Vietnam, India, Taiwan, Colombia, Austria, and Russia. There have also been cases reported in Washington, D.C. The symptoms became so severe at times that some people left their jobs and a few people were pulled away from their assignments and transferred somewhere else. So what's causing the symptoms associated with Havana syndrome? As the investigation into Havana syndrome took shape, an early theory was that the employees were being attacked by some type of acoustic weapon, like something that would use sound waves to cause harm, an invention that nobody had ever seen. The government could not find any evidence to support this theory. Later, the theory was changed to a directed energy weapon using pulsed radio frequency energy. In 2018, another theory was developed. Perhaps microwaves were to blame. A research study published that same year suggested that some of the employees with Havana syndrome had brain damage. This study had a great impact on how people thought about Havana syndrome, like many people now believed it was a result of some type of physical attack, like a directed energy weapon. The difficulty was the findings turned out to be false. There was no brain damage. In reality, there were a few minor abnormalities which were observed in a small sample size of people affected by the syndrome. It is likely that there was no true difference between the brains of those who suffered from Havana syndrome and those who did not. The authors of the study acknowledged that the differences could have been caused by individual variation alone. So that whole study really went nowhere. Several more theories emerged, including crickets, pesticides, and mass psychogenic illness, which is also referred to as mass hysteria. In 2020, a report concluded that mass psychogenic illness was a reasonable explanation for the syndrome, particularly for the chronic symptoms. In 2021, a report was released indicating that the CDC had developed a case definition of Havana syndrome, essentially saying the syndrome had two stages. The first stage was characterized by experiencing an auditory or sensory event. The second stage was characterized by cognitive deficits or trouble with balance and spatial orientation. The report indicated that no mechanism of injury or process of exposure could be identified. There is no treatment available for the syndrome. No theory has ever been proven. The U.S. government doesn't know the cause of the symptoms. At the time making this video, 200 possible cases of Havana syndrome have been reported. Now moving to my analysis. The debate over Havana syndrome involves mostly two theories a physical cause, like microwaves or sound-based weapons, and a mental health cause, like mass psychogenic illness. Havana syndrome has caused a vigorous debate, with supporters of each theory accusing the other side of not being scientific. This is essentially a battle between researchers from different fields. 
each thinking that the answer to the mystery is contained within their area of expertise. The leading theory at the time of making this video, of course, is mass psychogenic illness. But is this really the cause? Can all of the symptoms in about 200 people be explained by a mental health phenomenon? Let's review the evidence that supports the theory that mass hysteria caused Havana syndrome. Item number one. All of the assessments performed on people suffering from the syndrome have failed to find any physical abnormalities that could explain the symptoms. Item number two. There is disagreement about what, if anything, happened in these various locations where Havana syndrome was reported. For example, a former director of the Central Intelligence Agency has expressed skepticism as to whether an attack ever took place anywhere. Item number three, some of the attacks have been recorded by people who developed the syndrome, meaning they recorded the sounds with an audio recording device. Of those recordings, which have been analyzed, in every single instance, the sound was coming from insects. The microwave theory was based on the idea that if someone was exposed to intense microwave radiation, they may perceive sound, even though there was no actual sound. This is called the Frey effect. So if some type of microwave weapon was being used, an audio recording device would not pick up any sound at all. Item number four, after the government employees experienced symptoms in Cuba, other Foreign Service officers were warned about mysterious attacks that can lead to symptoms. They were even told what symptoms to expect. So we see the situation where people were expecting they might run into these attacks. So they are starting to think in a way that leads to mass hysteria. Item number five, the microwave theory is problematic. The amount of energy required to cause the symptoms would be extremely high. There is no easy way to hide a device that would be large enough to do that. There is no way that microwave radiation can heat up a specific part of the body, especially if it was being transmitted through a wall. Some researchers believe this theory is really just science fiction. No directed energy weapon has ever been developed capable of producing Havana syndrome, regardless of what it's based on, like whether it's radio frequency or some other type of weapon. Item number six. There is a logistical problem as far as carrying out attacks with a directed energy weapon, again, if something like that could exist. People have reported being attacked under all different types of conditions, at work, at home, in hotel rooms, and in other places in many different countries. What entity would be sophisticated enough to build a directed energy weapon and then deploy it under these circumstances? What would be their motivation? If they are trying to harass government workers, there would be less costly and easier ways. Item number seven. There is a long history between concerns over acoustic weapons and mass hysteria. Fear over sound-based weapons actually goes back for thousands of years. It is a recurring theme throughout history. Many people have even attempted to weaponize sounds. For example, Hilary Duff and Nicki Minaj. The sound-based weapons connected to Havana syndrome, of course, are theorized as much less destructive than those singers. At the turn of the 20th century, telephone operators experienced symptoms they blamed on sounds coming from headsets. This occurred in several different countries. There have been many reports of mass hysteria caused by insects, like people who were convinced that insect sounds were causing their symptoms. Over the course of many years, there have been reports about people hearing what is referred to as the hum. It is a sound that they can't escape and other people can't hear. Many potential causes have been investigated for the hum, like wind turbines, factories, and even giraffes. In one case, people thought that low frequency humming from giraffes at a zoo were causing their symptoms. An investigation revealed that giraffes do hum, but even people who worked for the zoo could barely hear the giraffe's humming. Some people wondered why giraffes would hum in the first place. Apparently, it is a form of communication they use in the dark. I'm sure that as soon as the question about why giraffes hummed was asked, one of the zoo workers blurted out, it's because they don't know the words. Item number eight, stressful environments full of fear are strongly associated with mass hysteria. Some people who work for the US State Department are in high stress jobs there are legitimate concerns for their safety from time to time. A good example of how mass hysteria can be fear-based would be the gas attack incident 
in Illinois in 1944. This was toward the end of World War II. The Allies were winning the war, and there were concerns that Germany would launch a gas attack as they became increasingly desperate. The mass hysteria originated in Illinois and spread to many places in the country. No gas was ever detected. Item number nine. Communication from a distance, like through social media, can transmit mass hysteria. Personal contact is not required, so it's not like all the workers needed to be in the same building or in the same location of any type. There have been cases where people communicated via social media and developed symptoms. For example, the mass hysteria incident in Leroy, New York in 2011. There were a number of teenage girls who developed mysterious symptoms after communicating on social media. And the mass hysteria in Germany regarding a social media influencer who had Tourette syndrome. A number of people watched this influencer and developed the same symptoms he was having, even though many of the symptoms he manifested were not consistent with Tourette's syndrome. Item number 10, according to an investigation performed by the Cuban government, mental health causes are the only causes which cannot be dismissed. Cuba has cooperated with the United States. They deny any responsibility for the symptoms. When weighing all the evidence, can Havana syndrome be explained by mass psychogenic illness? In my opinion, yes. It seems very likely that the syndrome is actually mass hysteria. It's really the only way to explain how all these different people could be affected in all these different places with a wide variety of symptoms, all of which have no physical health explanation. If this is mass hysteria, what's the cure? How can the people get better? Mass hysteria essentially functions as a self-fulfilling prophecy that spreads as people become afraid. People worry about some type of danger. They start to develop symptoms due to that worry. This makes them more afraid, and the symptoms intensify. Other people see what that person is going through, they become afraid, and the same thing happens to them. The cycle can persist for a long time. In order to recover, the cycle must be broken. Research tells us that accepting the truth about the origin of the symptoms often leads to recovery, and denying the truth leads to more pain. The symptoms of this mass hysteria will continue as long as people blame a directed energy weapon or some other intervention by a foreign government and do not accept what's probably really going on. If those affected continue to believe that their brains are physically damaged, their recovery will slow down. Accepting the most probable explanation, mass hysteria, will probably eradicate the symptoms. There is no reason for anybody with Havana syndrome to be embarrassed. Mass hysteria affects normal people. Everybody is vulnerable. The symptoms are absolutely real, it's just that they are somatic in origin. This is not a case of malingering. No one here is being deceptive. I think what happened with Havana syndrome is that there was a confluence of risk factors that were able to initiate mass hysteria. Sometimes circumstances just align and make these types of occurrences more likely. Another problem with Havana syndrome is the name itself. Havana syndrome is not actually a syndrome. A syndrome is a group of symptoms that regularly occur together. But with the case of Havana syndrome, that's not what we see. People try to make this argument that all these people have had the same symptoms, but that's simply not true. There's actually quite a remarkable amount of variation in the complaints. Technically, Havana syndrome is actually an illness, not a syndrome, and that illness is probably mass hysteria. The last point I want to make here is about how Havana syndrome has actually caused a lot of problems beyond the symptoms. We see a number of politicians raging about deliberate attacks. There was talk of retaliation. This instance of mass hysteria could have led to military action. It's frightening how easily people can gravitate to an evil operator explanation above one based in mental health. The politicians wanted revenge before they even knew what was causing the symptoms. It's like the mass hysteria of one group is tapping into the paranoia and incompetence of another. Those are my thoughts on Havana Syndrome. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always lead to an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.